Hello, it's General Lee 314 and today I am going to be showing you an overview of the Byloid Beginner Robot Kit. So here is the box and if you open it up, you'll see the various components of the kit. I don't have everything in here right now because I've used it. So today I'll be talking about the software, the hardware, the controller, sensors and the motors. First, let's start with the motors. These here are Dynamixel AX12 motors and they are considered some of the most advanced uh, robot actuators out there. They have built-in microcontrollers and um, they ca they've got sensors to measure uh, temperature, current, um, load, and they can either go 360 degrees, they can have continuous rotation, or they can rotate to a given position like a standard hobby servo. Um, they're pretty expensive, 50 bucks, somewhere around there a piece. Um, I think that's what makes this kit really get most of its price. Now you have a sensor unit, which looks a lot like the motors actually, except if you actually lifting it, you'll feel it's a lot lighter. It's got infrared sensors, uh, light sensors, sa uh, like a microphone for sound. There might be some more, I'm not sure. But that's pretty much the overview of the sensor. Since this is like in the same package as the motor, it can be used with any of the brackets. Now, onto those. The, the brackets are all standardly designed to fit with the motor and with each other. It's a pretty modular design. I like it a lot. Over here, you've got all the hardware. You've got various sizes of screws. There's one size that's mostly used. You've got your nuts, some spacers to attach the other side of the motor to brackets, um, some spacers. Then you've also got tires, so you can make a uh, wheel grow lot. You've got some more brackets over here held together with rubber bands. And here you've got feet for like the ultimate project, which is the walking robot, the walking droid. And here's the controller. One thing that I see about this is it doesn't actually have a bottom, so the battery falls out pretty easily. But it does have this enclosure, which you have to put screws in these little holes, and it's really hard to see, but you have to screw those in. Um, that's kind of annoying. But about the controller in general, it's got like a D-pad buttons for he right here for interacting with the robot. It's got a mode button, so manage, program, or play the program that's loaded on it. Start button, and then serial bus ports right here. Switch. PC link, switch, on and off switch. Um, charging port. So, about these motors. You can see it's only got uh, three buses to plug them into. However, if you take the motors and the sensor, you'll notice that they have two ports right here, and they can actually be daisy chained, because like I said, they each have their own individual microcontroller. So it can output serial to certain IDs. Like each motor has its own unique ID, so it can output something to each motor specifically, and the others won't read it, but the motor that has a corresponding ID will uh, perform whatever task you ask it to. So you go like this, and then so I have motor ID one and motor ID two both plugged into the same port and plugged into each other, and I can control them each individually. Anyways, about these wires, the connectors are kind of hard to pull out. Actually, you can't really grip the plastic part, so it feels like you're going to end up yanking out the wires. But they're pretty tough, actually. You can pull on the wires, and it'll be okay. That's what I've been doing, and it's fine. Because you can't really get at this plastic part. And lastly is software. This comes with a disc with three programs on it. Um, the motion control editor, I think, which shows you like an image of your robot or just servos if you don't tell it which robot you've made 
And what you can do is you can position them. And then it will take that. And you can hit a button and it will save that as like a pose. And then um, you can replay that pose. You can make animations with different poses and stuff. Then it's got the behavior control editor, which is like um, programming. Just It's just a graphical drag and drop type. Well, it's not really drag and drop, but it's a graphical program, and it's kind of strange, but it's got this user's guide with really good documentation on how to use it. The English is kind of weird. Um, yeah, it's kind of clunky, but it's pretty easy to understand, so you'll get the hang of it. And every robot that it contains instructions for in the quick start guide, uh, it has preloaded programs that come in the software, also videos of how they should act and what they should do. And a great thing about programming I have is that the connector uses for programming is a serial connector, so I had to get this from Staples, which is a serial to USB converter. And the drivers for this thing, I had to go online to get them because the CD that it came with didn't support 64-bit uh, windows. So that was annoying. It took me a while to figure it out why it wasn't working. Um, and another thing I want to mention about the hardware, I said how they have clunky English. This is an Asian company. It's written in Korean right here, I believe. Um, so you're supposed to use Japanese industrial standard screwdrivers with this. I'm just using regular Phillips screwdrivers. I found a really good size that works pretty well. And even though there's a potential, you could strip the screws. I have been okay with just using regular Phillips head. So I won't be too worried about it. Just be careful not to strip the screws. And that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. So thanks uh, for watching and please subscribe.